Hey guys, what's good? It's your boy Nemo. Today I'm going to be checking out a video. Um, 10 prohibitions from Saudi for Saudi Arabia women that are hard to believe. Um, to be honest, uh, there's a lot of things in this world which are happening which are hard to believe. And um, a lot of things that are going on which obviously people from Western culture like myself will kind of think they're a bit strange. Um, but anyways guys. Today we're going to be reacting to this video about uh, Saudi Arabia. If you're from Saudi Arabia, comment below. Tell me what it's like there, because I would probably like to visit Saudi Arabia one day. Um, yeah, man. Jesus loves you. Let's get into this. <laughs> uh, let's see what this video is saying. Lego. 11 Prohibitions for Women in Saudi Arabia That Are Hard to Believe From choosing a husband to using public transit, lots of everyday things we're completely used to are prohibited for women in Saudi Arabia. According to the 2017 Gender Gap Report by the World Economic Forum, Saudi Arabia... It's crazy because in Western culture, it's very common to see a man cooking for the family, a man taking care of the kids while the wife goes to work, but in places like where I'm from, you know, um, I'd say it's more old fashioned and traditional. The man will usually go out, work, come back home, feed the family, the woman stays home, takes care of the kids, you know, cooks the meals and whatnot. Most of the time, um, things are changing now a bit due to the influence of Western culture, but that's how it traditionally was. Arabia ranks 138th out of 144, making it one of the harshest places for women to live as far as equal rights are concerned. But is it really so bad? Which popular stereotypes are true and which are myth? This video will set things straight. 11. They can't go anywhere without a male escort. Is that true? Women in Saudi Arabia don't have the right to go anywhere without their husband or a male relative. This male chaperone is called a maharam, and without his approval, a woman can't get a passport for travel abroad, among other things. However, starting in 2017, thanks to the hard work of women's right activists, Saudi women no longer need their male guardian's permission to go to college, get a job, or undergo surgery. But in case a woman needs to go to the police, a maharam must be present to speak on her behalf. In this case, there's no way she can say anything about her maharam if she has a complaint. There have been some protests against this law, but overall, most Saudi women actively protect their right to be under the guardianship of a man. 10. They weren't allowed to drive until recently. What? What? In recent years, there have been a series of new laws aimed at the liberalization of women in the Gulf states. In September 2017, the king of Saudi Arabia announced a major change in the law that will allow... Imagine, like, the life of an Arab king or an Arab prince. Like, you know, the royal family look like they're living good here, but imagine how, how the royal family live as Arabs in Saudi Arabia. Like, they've, they've been doing royal families for since the beginning of time, I think. Um, same with Africa, like Africans, we've always had the tradition of royal families. Um, I don't know if Europe, when Europeans started having the tradition of um, royal families too, but yeah, man. Oh, In the Middle East, royal families since the beginning of time, well, not the, be the very beginning of like humanity, but since the thousands of years, the Middle East has had a tradition of um, having royal families, I suppose, like King David, Prophet David, him. And to drive cars starting in June 2018. A woman will still need to get her guardian's permission to drive though, but decades long protesting against the ban that came into effect way back in 1990 seems to have finally paid off. Nine, they're prohibited from using public transit. Well, if you can't drive, at least there's public transit, right? Wrong at least for Saudi women, that is. Taking a train is allowed only in Riyadh, but women still have to use a separate car at the end of the train. As for bus companies, most of them refuse female passengers. 
This is why women in Saudi Arabia either have to walk or use a personal driver. In some regions, a woman who takes a cab without her guardian is even considered immoral. What? Eight, women must be covered entirely. When out in public, women in Saudi Arabia cover their entire bodies, with the exception of their face, hands, and feet. A black abaya, a long dress with sleeves, and hijab, a head covering, are the only things a woman can wear. The clothes should be made from thick fabric and baggy so that they don't highlight a woman's curves. But this is highlighting her boobs. I think she failed. I'm not gonna lie, I think she failed. Why is this highlighting her? Mm -hmm. The strictness of this rule mostly depends on the region. For example, Jeddah is a more liberal city while the Naj region is extremely conservative. In some parts, women are still required to wear a niqab, a special garment that covers the whole face with just a narrow open slit for the eyes. The crown prince of Saudi Arabia claims that women have the right to refuse this strict dress code. Even so, if a woman is raped, she can be found guilty if her clothes are considered too revealing. I don't know, that's a bit too much you know because sometimes like you know men will always find a way to lust over a woman men will always find a way no matter how covered up she is as soon as they know that's a woman they'll find a way to lust after it they can even imagine picture her naked in their mind no matter how covered she is so i don't think it's fair that she gets in trouble if she gets raped now obviously if she's walking around naked or wearing a bikini all day in front of men who are sexually starved, um, then of course you could give her a warning for that, but still it's the man's fault for acting on those, you know, feelings. You know, he should be held accountable for that as well, I believe. Seven, a college education, though not prohibited, isn't necessary. Women are allowed to get a higher education, but there are a lot of limitations. While the percentage of women in Saudi Arabia with a college degree is actually higher than that of men, the quality of the education in universities for women is far from good. If a woman's guardian gives her permission, she can study abroad, but that's still a challenge since it's harder for women to get scholarships. Most Saudi women study teaching or a science-related field, but they don't typically work after college. Six. Not many of them work, but that's quickly changing. While only 12% of women worked in the private sector in 2011, nowadays this number is up to 30%. That's a nearly 130% increase. What's more, the government plans to make women 28% of its total workforce by 2020. Why not 50% of this workforce? Equality, nah bro. I'm not feminist. No. Still though, they're... But big up women. Women like deserve to have a right to work. Range of career paths is pretty limited. Women can choose to be doctors, nurses, and educators. Female politicians and lawyers are very rare exceptions. For women, it's much harder to build a career than for men since they're paid less and don't get benefits like medical insurance. In order to hire a woman, an employer would have to spend a lot of money on separate offices, restrooms, recreational areas, and even entrances. As you can imagine, not too many companies are willing to do that. 5. Do Saudi women marry for love? There is a legend that I've heard out here on the streets from my fellow Muslim friends during Ramadan or during this time of year anyway and they told me that a lot of Muslim women will get married just so they can have freedom to do more of the things that they want to do not necessarily because they love the fella but because the fella they're marrying will give them freedom to do more of the things that they want to do now let's see what this video says. Family relations in Saudi Arabia are one of the hottest topics for discussion. The thing is, girls there get married at a very young age, often before puberty. Before puberty. Before puberty. Before puberty. No offense, but I know the West is pretty messed up. I know the West is messed up. 
if you look at the things we do in the West, the things, the traditions that take care, that take place here are crazy. But prepubescent marriage is legal. The government recommends a marriage age of 15 years, but even younger is considered permissible. Now, there have been proposals to allow underage girls to get married only with both their own and their mother's consent. Otherwise, such marriages lead to a situation like the one in 2010, when the Saudi Human Rights Commission helped a 12-year-old girl hire a lawyer to divorce her 80-year-old husband. Forced marriages are officially prohibited, but a contract between the future husband and the father of the bride is still necessary. If a woman wants to get married for love, she needs permission from her guardian. And in case her sweetheart is a foreigner, she needs to get permission from the Ministry of the Interior. Marrying a non-Muslim, however, is pretty much impossible. 4. They'll never answer the door. Most houses in Saudi Arabia have two entrances, one for men and one for women. Women can hang out with their friends, but only in their half of the house. Male guests can only visit the other half of the house where women aren't allowed. If a woman needs to tell her husband something, she can call him over the phone. Yo, that's like, <laughs> you know them ones, yeah? Like when you're too lazy to get up and go tell someone something, so you just text them. You used to always do that, bro. Three, boys go right, girls go left. Gender segregation is alive and well in Saudi Arabia. The idea is to keep women from coming in contact with unknown men. This means that society is split into female and male parts not only in the home, but also in public places like on the beach, in public transportation, and especially in restaurants since women need to remove their veil in order to eat. In most public places there are separate rooms for families, bachelors, and unmarried women. Since Western companies like Pizza Hut, McDonald's, and Starbucks don't want to lose clients, they follow these rules in their Saudi locations. They also get a lot of heat from liberal citizens. There was a lot of controversy in 2016 when a Riyadh Starbucks was undergoing repairs during which they had to take down a wall separating the male from the female half of the restaurant. Women, of course, were prohibited from entering the cafe during the reconstruction and were told to send drivers to deliver their drinks instead. There are some places in the country where gender segregation isn't so strict, like in hospitals and banks. Mm. When, it's shmoney, when it comes to shmoney, no one's separated for that. Two, there is no gender equality. A Saudi women's word is two times less valuable than a man's. Just to file a lawsuit, she needs six male witnesses. And the sentencing can be based on tribal traditions, not on the law. A child can never become a citizen of Saudi Arabia if his father is a foreigner. A man gets two times more when it comes to inheritance, and women in rural areas are usually excluded entirely. A man gets two times more when it comes to his inheritance. This reminds me of a story in the Bible, yeah? Um, I can't quote it word for word, but essentially what happened was um, it's the book of Jacob, it's about Jacob and Esau and um, basically Esau's birthright um, as the first son was to get double the inheritance and also to be the one to, um, I guess, be the seed of God's promise to the world the seed of Israel but um, Jacob pretty much took that from him Jacob bought his birthright from him by giving him some food because he felt like he was going to die and he begged for the food and Jacob was like okay if you want this food give me your birthright from God and then Jacob's name got changed to Israel Jacob ended up um, having 12 sons and these 12 sons names became the names of the tribes of Israel. He had a son called Judah, and then through the line of Judah came um, the Messiah. You know, um, yeah, read up on it if you're interested. Clearly from the list of heirs. One, sports are for the boys. The women of Saudi Arabia weren't allowed to represent their country in the Olympic Games until 2012. 
The government made this decision under pressure from the International Olympic Committee. But still, it's not easy for Saudi women to build a career in sports. Not only is it frowned upon by both the government and society, women also can't get any athletic scholarships or special training. They're also not allowed to use all kinds of sports equipment. Bonus! What if a woman breaks the rules? If the woman breaks a law or goes against a custom in Saudi Arabia, she'll be punished, usually harshly. The religious police can punish a woman for simply talking to an unknown man. What? Or for wearing clothes that aren't made from thick fabric. What? That's crazy. One of the lightest punishment is lashes. Depending on the region, there are cases when women are brutally killed even women that aren't Saudi citizens, but just guests in this country. Release from jail is only possible after a male guardian's request, but he can also ask for a harsher punishment. In this case, a woman stays in jail for a really long time. It's worth mentioning that, while the world criticizes Saudi Arabia for its harsh gender inequality, the women in this country go on with their normal day-to-day, -day, and many of them don't really want to change anything. Mm. Well, if you've been used to the system, I guess you only like what you're used to, I guess. What do you think about all these prohibitions for Saudi women? Tell us in the comments below. Don't forget to click subscribe to stay on the bright side of life. Mm. That is really interesting. I definitely did enjoy that video. It was great that I was able to watch that video and I guess somewhat learn a few things about Saudi Arabia from it. I've always wanted to visit the Middle East, always wanted to go to Israel, um, always wanted to visit, I guess, Saudi Arabia, Dubai as well. I definitely want to hit up Dubai, um, you know what I mean? Dubai seems pretty cool. My uncle's been there and he said it's, he said it's great. So, I definitely want to check out Dubai and um, things like that. If you're from the Middle East, tell me which country you're from and yeah. Yeah, man, I might want to go to Kuwait as well. It'll be pretty dope. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I pray all of you have a blessed day. God bless every single one of you. Do truths, God bless you, and peace. Yeah!